I think you guys are gonna like this one. Good morning, YouTube. What's up, everybody? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. It just seems to get more and more festive behind me with all the trees. So today we are talking about a shoe that I honestly did not think I was going to review at all, quite frankly, because I did not like the first version of this shoe. I think I'm probably in the minority on that. I never tried the second version, but then I saw the third version and I thought this is too intriguing not to review, especially from a middle of the Packers perspective. So today we're gonna talk about the Nike Alpha Fly 3. Before we get started today, I do want to ask that you go follow me on Instagram. I'm posting a ton of content there, running content, running shoe content, everyday life content. If one video a week for me isn't enough, go follow me at Run Like Keller because you'll just get more stuff over there. The Alpha Fly is supposed to be Nike's top of the line, top tier, creme de la creme of marathon running shoes. Think of the Nike Vaporfly 3 as their super shoe, and then think of the Alpha Fly 3 as their super duper shoe. The idea is that it's supposed to get you to the finish line fast, efficiently, and comfortably. I know to some, this shoe can look a little bit intimidating and even ridiculous, I mean, have you ever seen a running shoe that looks like this in your entire life? But I do think that Nike has actually done a damn good job here of making a really, really fast, fun racer, but not excluding the rest of the pack that maybe isn't so elite. In fact, this is a shoe that I could see myself wearing Maybe not for a full marathon, but I definitely think I could take this to half marathon, no problem. I did three kinds of runs in it. The first one was a workout where I did half mile on at tempo pace and then half mile off at easy pace. And then my second run in this shoe was an eight mile run around my marathon pace. And then today I just got back from it, in fact, I did a 5K race in the Alpha Fly 3. We're gonna talk about everything I learned over the course of the week about this shoe, what I liked, what I disliked, and how I think this shoe performs for a middle of the pack runner. But first, of course, you gotta watch the run footage. Before we get started today, I do want to let you know that this shoe was sent to me by Nike. However, they're not going to see this video before you. They can't tell me what to say and all of my opinions are completely my own. All right, as always, let's start with the upper of the Alpha Fly 3. Nike is using a new and improved Adam Knit upper here. I'm not quite sure how to describe Adam Knit to those of you who have never experienced it. It's very lightweight, almost kind of a mix between a very, very lightweight mesh and a very lightweight knit. It's extremely breathable, as you might have guessed. And it's all one piece, meaning that the tongue is part of the upper rather than being its own entity that's gusseted or not gusseted. In the midfoot, there's really no overlays at all. And if you go to the back, the heel counter is pretty flimsy as well. You're just gonna feel air flying through that shoe as you pick up the pace. And despite the fact that it's a little bit colder outside right now, I really did appreciate that. I'm really not a big fan of one piece uppers. I like to have a tongue. It just helps me cinch down the laces better. And I kind of feel the same way about that in the Alpha Fly 3. The one complaint I have about this upper is I have a very narrow foot and I think there's a lot of material in the midfoot. So I gotta cinch and really pull those laces to make sure that my foot stays in place. Yes, the shoe is my size, it's not too big. It's just a little bit voluminous, 
voluminous, volu well, I don't know. It's just got a lot of volume up here. Otherwise for a racer, I really like the upper of the shoe. I don't normally love the ankle collars with no padding like around the top of the ankle collar. I think sometimes that causes irritation. I didn't have any problems here in the Alpha Fly 3. And there is a little bit of padding uh, on the Achilles just to keep you extra safe back there. I'm not 100% sure how this shoe would do with wide-footed runners. You'd have to ask Wide-Foot Jarrett from Believe in the Run. I know he tested this shoe. But I think for narrow to average size feet, you're gonna be fine here. But if you are like me and have an extra narrow foot, you might have to cinch down a little bit. I think this upper is really, really good for what it's supposed to be doing. They give you so little of it, yet it's very efficient and still gets the job done. Now let's move down to the craziest midsole in the running shoe game. So if you don't know about Alpha Flies, here's the basics that you need to know about their midsole. First, you got a whole chunk of Zoom X foam here. And what's different in the Alpha Fly 3 is that there's one continuous bottom piece of foam for smoother heel to toe transition. Then you got a carbon fiber plate. For the 3, Nike has also updated that and made it a little bit wider. And then of course, last but not least, you have the Air Zoom units on each side of the forefoot. So when I took this shoe out for my half mile on, half mile off workout. Running my easier pace in this shoe didn't feel too bad. I was running like a nine minute mile or so. I thought it was gonna feel a little bit clunky and it really didn't feel clunky at all. And then when I started picking up the pace in this shoe for my half mile on, Whew. Immediately, I felt those zoom units compressing and just shooting me back up. My legs didn't feel beat up after, they didn't hurt, my feet weren't uncomfortable. So overall, that was a really big win. My second run in this shoe was an eight mile run at my marathon pace, which is around like a nine, 9.15-ish mile. And again, this shoe really felt fine for that. I felt like I was able to get into a rhythm and a groove and put it on cruise control. I still felt that propulsion from the plate and the zoom units, but it didn't feel uncomfortable at slower paces. I did, however, go a little bit faster than intended that day. And I just think when you wear a shoe like this, that's gonna happen. So that really gave me hope that maybe I can take this much longer distances than I originally thought that I could. Now today I ran a 5k race in this shoe and I was going at pretty much an all out pace for myself today. And I ended up with a 22-25 5K, which was a 7.13 pace, according to the official results. I was really compressing those zoom units as much as I could because I was going as fast as I could. I truly felt like the midsole came to life and it helped me to settle in at a pace that would normally feel uncomfortable a little bit easier. The one thing I will say about this shoe that I didn't really like was that during my 5K today, there were a bunch of turns and I don't think this shoe does great with cornering turns. It's a little bit wonky when it comes to that. I think it's just because it's such a wild midsole, but if there are turns, it's not a deal breaker. It just feels not as efficient. Oh, hey, editing Emily here. I realized that I forgot to bring up something that I really wanted to bring up. Uh, and that's the fact that this shoe squeaks. One of the zoom units on the right shoe is just squeaking. It's not blown out. Nothing seems to be structurally wrong with the shoe. It's just squeaking. So I don't know what that's about, but at the end of this video, I'll put some squeaking footage so you can see what I mean. In terms of stability, yes, I am over pronating, but it is not as severe as it is in some other super shoes. Again, I think it's that widened plate that they put in this shoe. It's gonna help you to be a little bit more centered and stable on the platform. So overall, over the course of the week, I absolutely felt the magic of this shoe and I see what it's all about. I see why people like the Alpha Fly so much. And I think the changes that they've made will help the Alpha Fly to be more accessible to people. Because if I was able to use this on my easier run and it felt good and I was able to use it in a 5k and it felt good then that really opens the door for a whole slew of other things that you can do with this shoe rather than just running a marathon. I would encourage you to give it a shot if you are interested in trying this shoe and just see how you like it. You don't need to be elite or sub elite or a pro to wear a shoe like this. If you want it, you think it's going to make you faster, you think it's going to make you feel faster, then freaking buy it. I'm gonna say that this midsole is middle packer approved for sure. And I hope that it's durable because I'd like for this shoe to last 
many more miles so I can run in many more races with it. Turning the shoe over, Nike is using their fast shot outsole. I have no idea what that means. All I know is that the traction on this shoe is really good. You got some rubber in the forefoot, a lot of exposed Zoom X in the midfoot, and then two rubber pods in the heel. I've had no issues with the traction of this shoe. Keep in mind, the days that I have taken it out, it has not been wet outside. But in my experience, the Nike outsoles are pretty damn good at doing their job. And this one certainly feels very grippy and tacky on the pavement. And I do feel like the rubber in the forefoot especially is gonna be pretty durable. As far as pricing goes, I believe the Nike Alpha Fly 3 will be $275 when it is available in January. Once it becomes available on Running Warehouse, I will put a link in the description of this video so you can click it and pick up your own pair. Keep in mind that we'll be an affiliate link with Running Warehouse. However, it doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel so I can keep making these videos. Yes, $275 is a lot of money and on the more expensive side of the super shoe scale. However, I gotta be honest, I think this is the most super duper shoe on the running shoe market. I'm really impressed. I gotta hand it to Nike. I definitely did not think I was gonna like this shoe at all and I was wrong. I'm gonna keep racing in it at any local 5K, 10K that I can currently find, so. There you go. Well, everyone, that concludes my initial impressions of the Nike Alpha Fly 3. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit the notifications bell so you can find out every time I upload a new video. What do you guys think of the look of this shoe? I know it's pretty polarizing. I have another video for you next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like Heller. See you next time.